In this video, we will discuss an attack carried out by a pro-Iranian group against a United States base in Jordan that left three American military personnel dead. This attack increases pressure on Biden to directly strike Iran. If you are not subscribed to the channel yet, subscribe now and turn on notification. Don't miss any updates this Sunday, January 28th. An attack with drones on the U.S. Outpost Tower 22 in Jordan, near the Syrian border, resulted in three American military deaths and 34 injuries, marking the first fatal casualties among U.S. forces since the beginning of the conflict between Israel and Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Tower 22, what is commonly referred to as an outpost in the United States, is not a genuine military base with only 350 Army and Air Force personnel. However, it operates advanced systems such as attack helicopters and armored vehicles. Jordan and the United States have a military agreement in which the Jordanians finance part of the U.S. military presence in the country, and in return, the United States maintains a strong military presence south of Syria, preventing terrorist and pro-Iranian groups from operating in Jordan. The group claiming responsibility for this Sunday's attack is the Islamic Resistance in Iraq, a well-known terrorist group funded and armed by Iran, operating in Syria and Iraq for years. Since the start of the Gaza conflict, U.S. positions in the Middle East have been attacked dozens of times, but they were always low-intensity attacks that resulted in non-serious injuries. With this Sunday's attack, this pattern has radically changed possibly signaling the beginning of a trend of more intense attacks. Iran naturally denied any involvement in the Tower 22 attack, but the connection between the Islamic resistance and the Tehran government is undeniable. The increasing pressure on the United States for a direct attack against the source of these attacks, Iran itself, is evident, with numerous congressmen and senators posting messages on social media this Sunday urging Joe Biden not to waste time attacking puppets and asserting that it's high time to strike the direct operator of the puppets. The significant challenge is that Iran has effectively shielded itself from direct counterattacks thanks to the establishment of the Quds Force in the late 80s, one of the five branches of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, created to found, train, harm, and finance terrorist groups across the Middle East. Its mission is to attack Israel, Saudi Arabia, and the United States. The Iranians supply weapons and designate targets, but they don't pull the trigger, leaving that task to pro-Iranian groups operating in Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, and Yemen. Responding directly to an attack claimed by a group officially not affiliated with Iran might provide Iranians with justification to retaliate. These attacks could escalate tensions in the region, easily spiraling out of control and plunging the entire Middle East into a terrible open war. This raises an important question. Will President Biden succumb to internal pressure and directly attack Iran? On Sunday, Biden emphatically stated there would be a response, but he didn't specify the nature of the response or against whom it would be directed, whether against the group that conducted the attack or against Iran, which coordinates that route. If the attack is limited only to the group, it will undoubtedly eliminate many elements and destroy Iranian equipment and weapons. However, the impact on regional security will be close to zero, as other pro-Iranian groups will remain active, and the Islamic resistance could quickly re-emerge, requiring only a new shipment of weapons to Syria. The country is governed by dictator Bashar al-Assad, who has maintained a strong strategic partnership with Iran for years. This situation is undeniably complex for the United States, standing at a genuine crossroads, attack only the group, the perpetrator of the attack, and wait for new attacks in the coming hours or days, or attack the owner of those groups in Tehran, risking plunging the entire Middle East into a terrible war. A genuinely life-threatening dilemma. 